Well, good afternoon. Um, I wanted to clarify something here. Um, where um, Director Ross um, equated a um, borderlines to pathological narcissists um, on the spectrum. I would suggest that borderlines um, are at least uh, ha having that um, behaviorally in common. Behaviorally speaking, yes, in some respect. But as he stated himself before, that um, the difference between um, a borderline and a pathological narcissist is that the narcissist will never, ever, ever say, I'm sorry, unless they're screaming, I'm sorry, I'm not perfect, in a justified, you know, self-righteous, justifiable, self-justified manner. Okay, I made some mistakes. I'm not perfect. Fake apologies. That, that would be a pathological narcissist. A narcissist will never humble themselves to admit to anything. As a matter of fact, um, somebody with borderline behavior <coughs> who accelerates to narcissist or may have been a pathological narcissist all along um, and, and we're mistaking it for, for borderline behavior, um, they, they can't see or won't see what they do to hurt other people. And not only that, but they will fan, they will live out their fantasy um, in their speech. Later on in life, we'll say, I'm not someone who believes in yelling. I'm glad I never yelled at, um, you know, other people in life when um, screaming and hollering was what they did uh, day in and day out and day in and day out and day in and day out all day every day um, so it was from this behavior that um, my spirit um, escaped and um, it's how, see, I don't, I don't think of my spirit as escaping. I thought the Lord took me um, and chose me out of this horrific situation. And um, <coughs> I went uh, soul out of body. I, I didn't think that I had the power to escape, per se. But I think that um, the Monsignor is under the impression that my uh, spirit is trying to leave, you know. And, and, you know, speaking about it in the present sense, but, but these events happened a long time ago when I was 17, and I'm 53 years old right now. So, in fact, I was 53 um, two years in a row because at some point I forgot how old I was, but, so I've been, yeah, oh well. I'm turning 53 this year. And um, I think I skipped age 51. I, I think I went from 50 to age 52, and I forgot to turn 51. But anyway, um, my, uh, my soul was um, taken by the Lord out of body. That, that was my experience. I, I didn't think that my soul had the ability to go wherever the heck it wanted to. I, I was guided by an unseen force. I was pulled toward the lunar eclipse and then off to the left where my soul burst open into blissful song. So, as I was being torn from my body through several levels of the, um, what I called the limbo state, even the Pope overruled the teaching of limbo. You can call it a purgatorial state then, but it's still the same place. Um, 
that uh it, yeah, it was a purgatorial style, if you will, according to Catherine Ann Clark. And that was approved by the bishop of her area in um, Ireland. Um, that, uh, yeah, I was, I was pulled through um, several levels of, of limbo, uh, uh, that is to say outer space, and um, through several celestial choirs, and when I got to the top, I burst uh, like a firework open. I burst open like a firework into song. So as I was as I was being pulled, the it was painful, but not so much because the ecstatic joy absorbed the pain. So the pain, do you see? So so that the the pain was transformed into joy and I burst open into song and the the process was blissful and um, the, the higher I rose the greater the bliss and so in the sense there's a difference between ascension and assumption. It might be even pointing to the doctrine of the assumption of Our Lady. So anyway, um, the higher that I arose, um, um, the the difference between a subject <coughs> and a subject is that with a subject. Um, the angels are taking you. <clears throat> You're being guided. God is guiding you. Or the angels are taking you. Whereas ascension, you're, you're ascending under your own strength and power. But the higher that I arose, the more blissful. Um, my union with God. And that was my experience of it. Until I got to a, a light, and I um, it was to the left of the lunar eclipse, and then I was placed back in my body, and hard rock music filled my brain to wake me, and um, I assumed that the I mean I didn't assume it right away. Looking back on it, I realized it was the um, leftover uh, noise from the um, surface of the sun. Um, as I, because I had uh, drawn so close to the lunar eclipse. It filled my brain to wake me, um, and I woke up, and there was the same exact um, vision of the lunar eclipse. So people thought that I was hallucinating the, um, the eclipse, that it didn't really happen. And then I looked it up um, um, several years later. And discovered that it was there, um, recorded in NASA's records, December thirtieth, nineteen eighty-two, and that um, I also discovered recently that um, with Pope John Paul II, it was stated that the church was in eclipse, and that Pope John Paul II was born and died on a lunar eclipse. Um, so yeah, um, I don't I don't know why I got came on here to make the distinction between borderline and pathological narcissist, but but I think that you know with a um, a borderline like like we say that they're able to humble themselves and say they're sorry they feel grieved um, when they have hurt somebody and. I can't say for sure that um, the, the person in my life doesn't feel a certain amount of empathy or, or grief over hurting hurting us or you know any comprehension about it. Um, but she has never admitted that to us, that's all. And so um, the, the other possibility too is that um, <coughs> these uh, Narcissists are um, demon possessed. If they are possessed by the Jezebel spirit or they're just demon possessed, 
they may not even remember the things that they've done.